My name is Rocky Nichols. 32 years ago this month, I first walked in to Walker Tool and Die. And among some other really great guys, and one of the first people I met was Don McKibbitz. Don not only made me feel at home, he made me feel as though I was a part of a family. That day when Don and I met, we were at the peak of our physical condition. <laughs> Today, neither of us wishes to peak at our physical condition. <laughs> Mark did such a great job of giving an overview of the shop. I've decided to tell a few stories about Don that are outside of Walker Tool and Dive, since more than half of you don't work there. <laughs> and the rest of you sometimes don't work there either. <laughs> the first thing I'd like to talk about is Don the sportsman. Don is known to be a deer hunter. Some years ago, I decided to take up a second <coughs> career of taxidermy. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with taxidermy, I do not drive taxis. I do not do people's taxes. Taxidermy is the art of taking a trophy that someone has collected in the field and permanently preserving it and hanging it on the wall. Early in my taxidermy career, Don shot a trophy buck. He brought it to me to have it mounted. And I gotta show you this. There is, this is a catalog. This is a, a taxidermist catalog. What you do with taxidermy is you remove the skin and you tan the hide and you place it back over what's called a mannequin. It's just like in the mall where you see you know, in the storefront, there's a mannequin there, and they drape clothes over to sell it. Similarly, with taxidermy, the mannequin replaces what was inside the animal. You take measurements, nose to eye, nose to ear, girth of the neck, etc. Et then you peel the skin off, and you go through one of these catalogs, and you find the size that fits. Now, there are literally thousands of different positions and sizes of mannequins. I have about a dozen of these catalogs. I could not find one mannequin that was small enough <laughs> for Don's trophy buck. <laughs> there is, however, a section called a novelty section. <laughs> In there, you will find a mythical creature known as a jackalope. <laughs> Jackalopes are, are rabbits with teeny tiny antlers mounted to them. I went through the novelty section and I found a jackalope mannequin small enough to fit Don's trophy bar. <laughs> when I got finished with that thing, it looked like a demonic rabbit with two pencils sticking out of his head. <laughs> Apparently, he's still proud of it because he's got it hanging up with a tire on his neck and a cigarette in his mouth. I guess that's the proper respect that they deserve. <laughs> My next little story. At one point in time, Don became an aquarist. Now, an aquarist is a person who keeps aquarium fish. He decided to go out and buy an aquarium with all the bells and whistles. Really did a nice job of setting it up. Then went to a pet shop and purchased a fish known as an Oscar. Now an Oscar is a fish, it's a type of a cichlid. Very similar to a bluegill or a speckled bass that we see around here, but they are largely brown, reddish brown in color. Very good pet because they become acquainted with their owners. When you walk into the room, they'll come over to the edge of the tank and wait for food. You can take and feed them some fish food with your fingers. When they get very large, you can take and feed them your fingers. <laughs> now Don was pretty proud of this fish. 
every day I happen to be a very skilled aquarist myself. And keep that in mind that I'm a very skilled aquarist because that has something to do with it a little bit. So Don would come in every day and tell me the things that he did with his fish and how well everything was going. And at some point, oftentimes, novice aquarists decide that it's just too much work and expense to keep doing this. So me being the expert, Don said, hey, how would you like to take my fish for you for, for me? Because it's just it's just too much to take care of, and I'd really rather have someone who appreciates it more. Don even named this thing. What'd you name it? Oscar. Oscar. <laughs> Very creative. That's like naming your son Sonny. Anyways, he was fairly attached to this, and he wanted us to find a good home. So I was the logical candidate. So one day he brought in all the equipment, and I think the fish was in a five-gallon bucket or something. I took it home to my expert setup, got the aquarium all running, put the fish in there. Came in the next day and told Don, yeah, everything's fine, doing good. The next day, I, after work, went home and I looked into the tank and the thing must have been a, a chameleon. I couldn't see it. What happened to this? There's nothing to hide behind. Then I noticed something on the floor looked like a dried oak leaf. <laughs> I don't have oak trees in the house. So I reached down and sure enough, there it was. Oscar. He had jumped out of the tank and dried up. So Don had raised this fish. He's a novice. I'm the expert. In two days, I killed it. <laughs> now, you recall the story I just told before about being a taxidermist? And I never seem to throw anything away, including dead, dried up fish. We're having this party here tonight, and I thought it would really be appropriate if I could give Don a memento of our friendship. <laughs> so I thought, is it possible I still had that fish somewhere? So I did some rummaging, rummaging around today, went out to my shop, and put a little something together. This could be an emotional moment, folks. So. <laughs> it's been 30 years since Don has seen Oscar. <laughs> And by the way, judging the size of that trophy buck, I think this fits right next to it. <laughs> I do have one story that has something to do with the shop, but I think those of you who are not a walker to the night workers will appreciate it as well. It's about an individual who worked back in the mid 80s. I was the second shift foreman at the time. Don was the assistant day shift foreman for Bob Winkle. We have had an overlapping shift. I would come in three o'clock or so, get lined up for the night, and then everybody would leave except for the second shifters. We had a guy who came in, worked for cleanup. It's not here, is he? <laughs> I won't mention his name. Anyways, it rhymes with Lester. It was Lester. Okay, rhymes with Chester, but now it's out of the bag. Lester would come in in the afternoon and get lined up with Don, and he would, or whatever, he would clean some of the barrels, and then into the evening, a little ways, he would disappear because his job was done. Now, nice guy, but there was a little peculiarity about him. He would come in, and he didn't wear socks. And in a dye shop, you cannot do that. There's these nasty, aggressive, little hot chips on the floor. And as you're walking along, these things can get into your shoe and lacerate your feet. I think at times he didn't even wear shoes, but Don would tell him, Lester, you can't do this. You've got to have something on your feet. Next day, he came in again. Once again, no socks on, no shoes, and Don said, come on, you got to get some of this on. You can't walk around like that. Third day, Lester comes in and said, Don says, okay, this is like three strikes in your out, buddy. You cannot do this. 
anymore. And Lester said, but I made a promise. Don's like, a promise? What are you talking about? I made a promise to my mom. So Don's thinking, no, this is really good. Lester, will you just spill it? What's going on? Lester said, I promised my mom I would wait till after I was married to have socks. Oh. <laughs> okay, last story. <laughs> this story is actually about me. But the reason I tell the story is because it has a message for all of us. It's about getting old. And at the end, there's a little special twist for our guest of honor. When I was a kid, I had a friend named Joey. Joey asked me this question that I couldn't answer. He said to me, Rocky, what do you want to be when you get old? Now, he could have said, what do you want to do when you grow up? That would have made more sense, and I could have answered that. But he said, what do you want to be when you get old? Well, I couldn't answer because I never thought I would get old. And I'm not trying to be cute. But you see, there was reasons for me to believe that I would just never live that long. And I'll explain these to you. When I was 18 years old, I had a substance abuse problem. It's kind of embarrassing and awkward to admit this to all of you now, after all these years of not knowing this. But I was addicted to a substance Paul's mentholipus cough drops. <laughs> I remember my friends just getting up and walking away, thinking I was sick. Well, I wasn't sick, I just smelled like it all the time. I tried to quit time and again, but they just kept inventing new flavors. <laughs> I had to try them all. <laughs> then they came up with this new triple soothing action. But that did 
inspired me to lose some weight, which I did. But losing weight really wasn't the answer to all my problems either. I mean, what do you do with all this extra skin? I started to feel like one of those Chinese Sharpe dogs with all the wrinkles. <laughs> it was rough. <laughs> then I made it to 50. And things began to happen that led me to... Actually, things began to stop happening. <laughs> that led me to believe perhaps I was old. Things like driving all the way to work and then leaving my wallet at home. Waking up in the morning and feeling around for my glasses, only to find out they're still on my face. <laughs> or trying to shove these big old legs into a pair of pants and then have my wife come into the room and say, Hey, those are mine! <laughs> <laughs> but how do you really know when you're old? Are there signs? Then I heard the words of an old comedian who said, There are four signs to growing old. The first sign is when you forget people's names. Now, I won't ask for a show of hands, but I bet a lot of you are there right now. <laughs> the second sign, you forget people's faces. Same people who came up to you before, you couldn't remember their name. Now you don't even know who they are. <laughs> Third sign is really just for men. You go into the restroom, and when you come back out, you forget to zip up your zipper. <laughs> but the fourth sign, you go into the restroom and you forget to unzip. <laughs> Haven't made it there yet. <laughs> but that brings me back to the original question that Joey asked me. What do you want to be when you get old? Well, friends, after wrestling with addiction and defeating some, after gaining weight and keeping some off, and now arriving at the brink of old age and having my... <laughs> memory, thank you, memory depart. I know what I want to be. Younger! I want to be younger! Don't we all? But I can. And that bothered me for a time. Until I heard some words that changed my whole perspective on this. And here's the point of the story. If you're ever bothered by the fact that you're growing old or getting older and there's nothing you can do about it, I want to leave you with this thought. Someone once said, Good thing I wrote this down.
Actually, he was there when my wife and I were married first, and then he was there <laughs> with the words of wisdom. When my mom passed away, Don was there to share my sorrow. For each of us, when things went bad in our lives, we would be able to encourage each other and share in each other's life. And I say that not like he just did that with me, but Don did that with everybody. And there's people throughout this room who can verify that. We all know that there's a lot of guys who have come and gone. And they've left their mark. Every one of them have left their mark and walked into a guy. Most of them have left it in the grinding room wall, going to have a press. <laughs> But each one has left a little bit and added to the character of the atmosphere of that place. But I want to say personally, after working with you so many years, and you too, Bob, after working with all the people in the management part, there are something, there's something that when you are gone, you will leave that others have not. saying goodbye. And this is really not goodbye anyways. So I just want to leave it at, we'll see you soon.